All right, welcome to this wonderful video. And in today's video, I want to give you a complete guide on how to get more high ticket coaching clients through YouTube ads. This video is going to be very, very comprehensive. We will literally start from scratch. So this video is for beginners who never thought about running YouTube ads. This video is for people who run Facebook ads and maybe or thinking about maybe someday I should test YouTube. And this video is also for people who already have YouTube ads because at the end of this video, we will talk about um, how to scale YouTube ads then very profitably. Good. So what we will cover. Why YouTube ads are superior to Facebook ads, just as I mentioned, the best funnels and strategies for YouTube ads. This video is, will be predominantly for lead generation. So for everyone who is selling his services for high ticket prices, who needs to generate leads, who needs to book calls and sales via consultation sessions. Then we talk about how to script successful YouTube ads, yeah? how to target your ideal client with YouTube ads, and then at the end, how to profitably scale those campaigns. So this is not going to be a two hour webinar or something where I sell you the service at the end. Uh, no, this is really just a comprehensive, a complete guide, if you will, on how to do this. And ideally, at the end of this video, you should be able to set up YouTube ads for your own service and test it. Yeah? Because we basically give you for every step that you need to take a framework or a script or somehow a guidance on how to do this then properly. And most likely this video is going to be a little bit longer, so I will have to cut it into two parts. But um, there will be something in there for everyone, I'm pretty sure. So as I said, for who is this video then? It is predominantly for online coaches and consultants who are selling their services for high ticket prices. Ideally, you should be selling for $2,000 or more. Ideally, you should be in the range of $3,000, 4000 5000 um, Well, the larger your customer lifetime value, value, the easier it will be for you um, to become extremely profitable with those campaigns. Yeah. Um, I literally saw, never, ne I've never seen somebody who's selling his services for $5,000 and um, wasn't profitable with YouTube ads. So <laughs> the higher your cost or the larger your customer lifetime value, uh, the easier it will be for you. And you should be selling via a sales process or let's say via calls, via free consultation sessions or something. And then this video will be for you. And the strategies and the funnels I will be sharing with you, those will be the right one right ones for you. So let's get right into it. Why YouTube ads for coaches and consultants? Of course, this is a good question, right? Why do we need ads? Of course, we all know how it feels like when we're running a business, we're self-employed, maybe we have a small team already, we know how that feels like and we are, we're all looking for more stable revenue because as a coach or consultant, most of the time we are in somehow Something like a roller coaster, the, the revenue roller coaster or the turnover roller coaster. And we all know how that feels like when we're getting maybe four clients a month, then five clients, and then and at the third month, uh, only two clients or something. Yeah, how this, this revenue is not very stable and predictable. But with YouTube ads or in general with ads, you can be more predictable. And, and the whole process, the whole lead generation process is very reliable. Why? Because you have a certain price that you pay per booked call, that you pay per quality call, if you will, and then it becomes predictable. You know exactly what you pay per booked appointment, booked appointment in your calendar, right? And then you have more or less a certain closing rate, of course, on your calls, and then you can exactly calculate what will be your turnover, what will be the revenue at the end of the month by a given lead price, by a given monthly budget that you put into ads. Yeah, and this gives us safety in our own business because this is predictable. And being in a turnover or revenue roller coaster, this is not something um, that feels very comfortable yeah, in a company or in a business. It will also give you a higher expert status. Yeah, this is something most people do not talk about when they start running ads or, or advertisers or marketers do not really talk about, but it really is. Um, the more budget you put into this, the more visibility you will create, the higher your expert status will be. And also, the more retargeting campaigns you will run. We'll, we'll talk about this later on what this actually is. Uh, really, the higher your expert status will be and you're able to build an extreme amount of trust. Uh, this is this is like this is crazy, but we'll talk about this later on. Then, of course, automation. 
a automated lead generation process, something that is amazing, running ads, having a fully automated process. Of course, there are strategies out there, especially for Facebook ads that are not fully automated. Um, but when we're talking about YouTube ads and booking appointments, then this is a process that will be fully automated. The only thing that is not automated then is the sales process. Uh, this is something that we do not automate. Uh, but everything else besides that is fully automated and then there's less friction in the process because less human beings are involved means less friction. Once a funnel works, you know, once you've cracked the codes, a funnel can work for years and years and years and this is something that's truly amazing. Okay, and also YouTube ads can give you better clients with higher buying power. We will touch on that later on why that is. It has to do with the targeting, it has to do with the psychology on YouTube. Yeah, we'll touch on this later on, but this is something that's very, very amazing. So stay tuned. Wonderful. Good. Yeah, that's what most of you are doing at the moment right now. Organic marketing or referrals. Yeah, or let's rather say you're getting your clients from organic marketing and referrals. And I have to say right away, there's nothing wrong about it. Of course, those are both. Organic marketing is a great strategy and you can get fairly far. You can, you can, you can scale your business relatively far of organic marketing and that's something that's amazing and also if you're doing a good job congratulations if you're getting a lot of referrals you have an excellent fulfillment amazing good job but there's also a caveat right and we have a very limited network size let's take a look at linkedin right since last year linkedin shortened our um reach extremely long let's not say the reach the amount of connections we can make or the amount of people we can connect to on a weekly basis very limited, even with LinkedIn Premium, right? Very challenging. Instagram, growing on Instagram, <laughs> became very challenging as well over the last few years. So it takes you years and months to build a personal brand. Here, same spiel for YouTube. Yeah, it takes years to build a channel. And therefore, the problem is you grow relatively slowly. That's how it is. And it is always connected with somehow an an effort, energy that you have to put into this. Now you have to create posts, you have to create content on a, on a daily basis, ideally. Uh, there's a lot of time and effort that you put into this, so this is definitely a, a problem then. The client quality is worse. Um, this has to do, this is, has to do with some observations we made last year, especially in niches like um, weight loss and dating, everything that's, that is more in the B2C market. It doesn't really apply to B2B, but it applies more to the B2C market. This has to do with a concept that we call a fake audience and real audience. So with content marketing, especially when you're doing content marketing on Facebook and you're posting in, in Facebook groups or you're connecting with people on Instagram who follow other big brands, the problem there is that most people are already, already educated to a certain degree. So they do not see the real value sometimes in your services because they're not beginners anymore. And they're not willing to pay you, pay you extremely high prices for those services because they're already somehow educated. Yeah. Th those are the type of clients you may attract in or with organic marketing. And also, depending on your branding, you may attract a lot of people who do not have the buying power, depending on your branding. Yeah. May happen. With ads, you do not have this problem, at least not to this degree. Yeah, so that's very interesting. But we can talk about this later on here again. But of course, the cool thing is organic marketing referrals, and that's all. So that's for free. The only thing we gotta put into this is time, effort. We don't have to put money into this. Yeah, so that's amazing. What have you tested as well? Most likely, if you're into B two in the B two C space, most likely you've tested Facebook ads before. And I can tell you, Facebook ads can be amazing. We've seen amazing results, especially in the nutrition and weight loss fitness niche, um, amazing results with Facebook ads. But I can also tell you, and you've most likely experienced this in the past, this is challenging sometimes. We have rejected ads because our advertising copy does not comply with Facebook advertising policies. Then ultimately we have disabled ad accounts, which makes it even more difficult to advertise on Facebook, Facebook because it might be very challenging to get the ad account back at a certain point in time. Yeah, also very difficult. And then this is a concept that um, 
Barely someone talks about the mental opt-in is lower. What do I mean by this? Let me give you an example. So if I go here on my mobile phone on, on Facebook, right? How do people use Facebook? They're mindlessly scrolling through the, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they see an ad and then maybe they click on it and yeah, yeah, yeah. The mental opt-in is not really there. There is no commitment. Why? Because people are not in a learning mode as they are on YouTube. If you are somebody who's self-employed and you go on YouTube, most of the time you go on YouTube to educate yourself if you are self-employed. Right? You want to educate yourself. You're in a learning mode, quote-unquote. And therefore, the mental opt-in is higher. So if you see an ad on YouTube and you click on it, there is more commitment behind this to watch what's behind that page. Yeah, we can touch on this then in a minute again, but just here as a brief teaser here for you the mental opt-in on facebook is not really there and facebook is definitely harder to scale we all know how that is you know you have narrow well, relatively narrowed audiences then you run into ad fatigue very frequently you have to change ad creatives ad copy if you want to scale then you have to test new audiences new countries very challenging because especially once you found an ad set that really works you got to duplicate the ad set duplicate it again and uh, so all this is relatively challenging on Facebook. On YouTube, it's straightforward. I will tell you this in a minute, how it works on YouTube, and we touch on this at the end, how scaling on YouTube works. You will see this is very straightforward on YouTube compared to Facebook. And you have more competition. On Facebook, you are in a red ocean. Everybody and by grandma is advertising on Facebook. Yeah. And that's a fact. And therefore, the CPM's cost per thousand impressions is much higher. It is more expensive, right? And your ads definitely have to be better than your than the ones of your competitors in order um, to become profitable with this, right? Compared to YouTube, YouTube is truly an amazing advertising platform because there we can use so-called in-stream ads. I will show you an example right after this slide how this may look like. Let me tell you, an in-stream ad is basically the ad that you see if you're watching a video on YouTube and then in between the ad pops up or in, uh, before the video after the video this ad pops up I know this is where you're annoying sometimes but those ads work extremely well because the cool thing is you only pay if somebody views or watches more than 30 seconds of your video or clicks on the video ad so therefore you can build a structure in this video you can use a certain framework that we will give you later in this in this um, in this complete guide here you can use a framework that disqualifies people who are not in your ideal audience, people who are not your ideal client, so they don't watch those 30 seconds, so you don't have to pay for them. Compared to Facebook, where you literally have to pay for each and every impression, no matter if this is a good lead or it's a bad lead. So that's very cool on YouTube. Then if viewers are in a learning mode, we already touched on this, right? If people actively watch content to educate themselves and they purposefully decide to go away from this video they wanted to watch, and go on your landing page, on your funnel, then there's a certain commitment behind it because otherwise they would not do this. And as I said, they're already in the learning mode, so they're more likely to watch a webinar or a video right afterwards compared to Facebook. So the lead quality is much higher. Since we're doing everything with videos, there is more connection. You know, it's, it's, there is more emotional connection also because videos do sell better than just an image ad or something. Yeah. So that's very cool. The lead quality is higher. The leads are warmer, usually. Yeah. We can even target competitors on YouTube, which is something that is amazing when you start out, when you're starting your first YouTube ads and you just want to become profitable in the first few weeks. Then we always recommend go for keywords or um, placement targeting like this. And target your competitors because you know those are people who already got the problem. They're actively looking for a solution. Otherwise, they would not watch videos from your competitors. And this is ama an amazing way to basically work with the following of your competitors. They take years, it takes them years to build this audience and you're basically taking them and pulling them onto your offer, if you will, so to speak. Yeah? And as I said, YouTube ads are easier to scale. We'll talk about this at the end of this guide, how to scale YouTube ads profitably. I tell you right away, on YouTube, that's how it works. Once you found a winning ad that operates or that works and performs in a broader audience, you just got to put more money into this. So it's very straightforward. But there are some, some things you need to be aware of when doing this, and that's what we'll talk about then at the end. 
Good, and there, there's less competition on YouTube still. It is still, to a certain degree, a blue ocean compared to Facebook. Your costs per thousand impressions will be lower. The ads will be cheaper, most likely, compared to Facebook. And that's something that's very nice. Good. So, example of an in-stream ad here. One of our clients here just took this as an example. I do not want to talk about here a form of a case study, how amazing the results are or something. No, that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is explaining to you how to set up YouTube ads and how to get them running, right? It's a very comprehensive guide. And what you see in those in-stream ads, well, they got the call to action button. This is amazing. That's what people see. Then, oh, okay, go over to the landing page. And... On the right hand side there is the skip button and this skip button is so powerful because if we frame an ad if we script an ad and we use a framework that disqualifies people who are not in our ideal target audience we can literally tell them look if you're not this kind of a person please skip this ad now because we don't want to pay for those guys and we, then we don't have to pay for this ad and that's something this is genius <laughs> this is amazing on youtube okay good what are the funnels we can use or we may be using then on, on YouTube ads to generate leads. As I said in the beginning, the cool thing is on YouTube ads, the cool thing is we can get booked appointments. It's not like you, well, you can generate leads in form of an email address or a phone number or something. But predominantly what we want to be doing is we want to have booked calls in our calendar. And that's something that works extremely well on, on YouTube. Yeah. And that's why we're either using a so-called VSL funnel, video sales letter funnel. This is a short 20-minute sales video that literally sells the consultation session. Or you can also use a webinar. Um, this is then usually 90 minutes or sometimes two hours that sells the whole service, if you will. I always recommend going for VSLs because they're easier to create, they're easier to optimize, they're easier to test, and it's not that much of an effort, time-wise. Yeah. But if you want to learn more about this and what kind of funnels you can use, I just recently made another video on this. I will link it here above in a card for you. If you're interested in what are the right funnels or the best funnels for coaches and consultants, especially for YouTube ads, then check out this video. There we will dive really deep on how to set up VSL funnels and how to set up webinar funnels. Okay? and why I really recommend going for VSL funds. But that's not the purpose of this video. This is just your rough overview in this video. As I said, if you're interested, just click on this button down there. Good. So we want to be using YouTube ads, just as you see here on the left-hand side. Then we lead them to the so-called funnel, either the VSL or webinar funnel, and from there, people can book a call with you. But people have to go through a so-called application form first. Maybe you, you can be using the software type form for this. works extremely well. And what we're doing there is we can collect contact information, email, first name, last name, phone number, and we can ask certain qualification questions in order to keep the lead quality up, uh, to, to keep the lead quality on a relatively high level. So we're sure everyone who is booking a call with us in this calendar is qualified to a certain degree because he had to answer our qualification questions. He had to pass this qualification form first. So the lead quality is then relatively high. Then of course afterwards people book a call with you in the calendar and then the thoughts following from there is the sales process and you will have new clients. It is that simple to be honest. It is not rocket science. Yeah. And in order to push those results what you can do then is you can use either retargeting ads and or a email follow-up sequence. What you can do there is, we will touch on this later on, what you can do and what retargeting is, how this works, what you can do with retargeting, what I will give you some ideas, what you can use as retargeting ads, and then you can also use email follow-up or even phone follow-up sequences to improve, to push conversions and get more people through this funnel, okay? Wonderful, but we will talk about this in the second part of this video. Before we end this first part here, I wanna talk about the structure of a successful YouTube ad because this will be the most important part of this whole project. If the ad is good, if you're using the right framework, if you're using the right structure and you understand your audience and understand, and, and you, uh, you address their needs properly, then you cannot really fail. That's something we see over and over again. Your targeting might not be perfect. Your funnel might not be perfect. It doesn't matter. 
if you're running a good ad, if you're using a good ad that performs, you're still on a profitable site. Yeah. So I want to give you this framework here today that you can use for every ad that you launch on YouTube. It doesn't matter what this ad will be. You can use this framework if you want. So the first point here is the so-called hook. Those are the first five to six seconds of the video. And this is the most important part of your ad, the hook. You have to grab attention. You have to set the frame properly. You have to get people into the right, right mode, if you will, so to speak. Yeah, And what works there extremely well is calling out your ideal audience. If you are someone who is looking for, bu -bu -bu, who wants to solve problem X, Y, Z, if you are a busy professional entrepreneur who wants to, if you want to start your coaching business and struggle with, in B2B what you can do, you are the decision maker of a company of more than 50 b -b people or something, you have a turnover of more than you are the business owner or decision maker in a company in a certain industry, call out the audience directly. That's something that works amazingly well on YouTube. Because people are, oh yeah, that, that's me. That's relevant for me. Yeah, I gotta pay attention. And if it's not relevant to them, they will skip the video because I, I don't, I'm not a business owner. I do not have a company. That's not relevant to me. I don't care. Then you don't pay for those guys. You can even go one step further now and use something like a disqualifier. You can even say, Look, if that's not you, if you're not interested in this, please skip this video now. It's not relevant for you. And you don't pay. So this is amazing. But as I said, the hook is the most important part of every video. And that's why we usually record three, four, or maybe sometimes five different hooks for one ad. And we're split testing those five hooks to see which one performs best. We do not have to re-record the whole ad. No, we don't. We don't have to. The only thing we got to re-record or record multiple options for is the hook. Because 80% of the results will come from this hook. Same spiel for landing pages, by the way. Yeah. After this qualifier, what comes then is the actual content. What is it that you're selling? Yeah. What are the, Talk about your audience. What is their situation? What are their problems? What is the language they're using? What are their pain points? And how your VSL or your webinar, depending on what you're selling on the next page, can fix this for them. You can even insert social proof at this point. I've helped more than 200 people to get certain end result X, Y, Z. Yeah, this is the content of your actual ad then. Yeah. Then what follows from there, first call to action. Click this button now, go over here to our landing page, watch the VSL video, or you can call it a free video training or a free training video, however. And this is basically the most important part of the ad. This is your whole meat, quote unquote, meat of the ad. What follows now is basically something like a bonus, if you will, because not everyone will be ready by now to click and go over to your landing page. There are some people who are still saying, ah, I'm not sure if it's the right thing for me. Ah. But you can increase the click-through rate. You can get more clicks by inserting now more benefits, more gains. You can even use testimonials. You can even use some video testimonials. This works amazingly well for target audiences who have a very high oxytocin level. They react on testimonials compared to an audience with a high testosterone level. So that's quite cool. You can insert video testimonials instead of happy clients. To build more trust, to prepare the person mentally already for the next step, which is watching the VSL. The mindset mode will be the, the, the frame there in will be completely different than when watching the VSL. Because you already built this rapport, you built trust and so on through testimonials. And then of course you have a second call to action, then afterwards click now and so on and so forth. You can even create some urgency, some scarcity. It depends a little bit on your audience if this is appropriate or not, but it depends to you. Uh, it depends on you. You can test this and you can even use a countdown at the end to create some urgency. All this works amazingly well. Good. But I don't want to make this video here too long since it is already quite long. So we'll be, we will cover the next parts then or the next topics in the second part of this video. I will probably release the next video in a few days or so, so please stay tuned. And we will talk about how to target the ideal client on YouTube. We will talk about how to scale those ads then profitably. Uh, so this is then more the, let's say, the advanced part of this complete guide, if you will, okay? So I will see you then in the next video, and till then, 
Bye bye and bye for now. <laughs>